I'm so excited to see you. I wanted to share with you, if you're at a place where you are getting ready to do your taxes or, and you're behind, I have to admit, I used to be behind on my taxes every year and I always promised like, I won't be. This year, I did really well actually. So I wanna share some tips with you on what you can do if you're already behind on your taxes to start entering them into QuickBooks, some tips to do it quicker, and then also tips in case you tend to get behind like I used to on what I use to, I still do it, um, just in case I get behind for some reason, I put certain details on certain papers. So I'm gonna cover all that. If you don't know who I am, I'm Candace Camper, and I love to help business owners and their teams simplify QuickBooks by custom around their, customizing it around their business. So I wrote a little notes today because I wanna make sure I was on point. So the first thing I did, and what I recommend doing is whether you are on desktop or online, you can download your bank feeds from your bank Pretty much almost all banks you can do that at this point or credit card you download it and then you import it now one tip I'll give you is download it one month at a time so especially if your bank account or your credit card it starts mid month to mid month so it's like the 15th to the 16th or something like that you want to make sure that when you download it you choose by the statement instead of doing it date range and the reason I say that is for the next tip so what I recommend doing is entering downloading the transactions if you've never, you haven't been entering your data and you're way behind, the easiest is to go directly to your income, go directly to your expense account and not worry about creating invoices and all of those kinds of things. I typically tell people when they come to the Getting Started Workshop, like we talk about which features you need. And if you're behind, my tip is to go directly into the banking center and start entering things. Now, you can always like, if you have to go back and do 2018, this is a great tip. If you're just starting on 2019, then you, even though you're a little bit like we're already into March, you can still go back and re-enter that data to get more detail, okay? So download it by the statement, then you're gonna want to reconcile it. Now, what is reconciliation? I notice a lot of people, they don't really, un they don't know what that word means. I was actually being with somebody the other day and they said, oh, my, my bookkeeper or my tax professional used to always ask me, did I reconcile? And I always said yes, but what is reconciling? In QuickBooks, it's actually going under the reconciliation and check marking. You take your piece of paper you get from the bank and you check mark that each of those things cleared. So it's just saying what I entered in QuickBooks matches what actually cleared my bank account. And you're just making sure everything matches. Now, one thing I'll also tell you when you're downloading, if you've been entering manually entering your transactions, especially if you're a desktop user and you're gonna download your bank feeds the bank feed is what it's called for the first time. You wanna make sure that you choose your uh, the bank that you already have or the credit card you already have. You don't need to create a whole brand new one at that point, you're just syncing them. All right, if you guys need tips on that, let me know, we'll do a video on it. All right, then you're gonna reconcile and only reconcile one month at a time. So a lot of times people think, I'm gonna reconcile all these years I've never done. Couple tips, one, if you've never reconciled your bank account before, um, and it's really messed up, you might wanna start a new bank account inside QuickBooks, not go out to the actual bank and start one, but inside QuickBooks. And the second thing is um, just do one month at a time. Don't try to do a whole year because if you have mistakes, it gets really complicated. So just one month at a time. Um, what? So those are some things you can do to do your data entry quicker. What can you do so that if while you're going throughout the year, you can, cause okay, what happens is when you haven't been doing your data entry for the whole year, it's hard to remember what a $2,000 deposit was in the previous year in January or February or even in December, right? Cause life happens and if you don't do something right away, it's kind of hard to remember what it was for. So what I, one of my tips is, and I still do this even to this day, even though I keep up on my QuickBooks, I take the receipt from, especially if you go like to the bank and you make a deposit or maybe, your husband or your boss, my husband was in construct has construction. And what he used to do is I asked him to do his best. At, we have Wells Fargo, so he was able to print the different checks. But what I told him to do as well is write on the deposit slip which job you're depositing for. Now, if you have like a hundred different checks, that's not very ideal. But if, if they're just doing like one or two checks um, and your husband typically does it, have them write on the deposit slip, okay? Let me know if that helps you. And on the receipts you can write as well if you need to, but I find that it's more the deposit slip where you forget what money you're depositing for. Have you ever had that happen? Let me know in the chat. 
Um, and then the next tip I would recommend is creating file folders. So if you tend to be disorganized or I don't want to say disorganized, but you're kind of like, you don't know what to do with your files. I'm going to give you a couple tips real quick on files. So the first one I recommend having set up is your bank account. So have a file, open it up when your statements come in, even if you haven't got a chance to like match them to QuickBooks, just throw them in the folder. And then if you have like mobile deposit or you do get deposit slips, throw them in your bank account just inside and then when you get to it, you'll have the detail that you need. Then you also wanna create, even if you have an A to Z folder that you put all your expenses in, make sure you have that. That's that's something I taught you guys before, if you've been here before. Um, and then on credit cards, I recommend every credit card has its own folder and you just put your credit card statement in there. And this is a big one. So if you tend to pay for your, um, either you or your boss, your husband, whatever that is, maybe your wife, um, you pay cash for your business expenses. I recommend creating a cash receipts owner contribution style folder so that as you go through the year, anything you pay for personally, but business related, you throw it in the folder and you can put a notation on it of like what it was for. Then typically I have a customer folder and then a miscellaneous. So a miscellaneous folder for all the just stuff that happens to come in, but I don't, you don't know what to do with it yet, or you know you want to keep it for later, but it doesn't really fit into any of your other folders. That's also what I would create. All right, so let's recap it. And then um, we'll I have another couple tips for you. So first, you want to make sure that I recommend if you're if you happen to do your data entry, you do your bank feeds. Reconcile monthly. Um, if your bank account's really messed up, maybe starting a new bank account inside QuickBooks. Make sure you comment on your deposit slips. Create your folders to make life simple. And then if you are a desktop user, make sure you're backing up your QuickBooks often on an external drive so it's not connected to your computer, okay? And I think that's pretty much it for today. Let me know what you thought. Comment down below. If you're at a place where you're wanting to set up QuickBooks or you've been using QuickBooks for a little while but you just don't know how to read your reports and you want to start using more of the features and really understanding what to do, how to use QuickBooks, join me on my next QuickBooks workshop. I have one this week. You can go to candiscamper.com workshop. I'll put uh, in the comments or in up above and you can come join me. It's a free workshop. What I'm going to teach you is at tax time, you always want to be able to read your reports, right? So that your, your tax professional, everybody thinks we do, we track QuickBooks or some people um, because it's for our taxes. Yes and no. Yes, you want to record your taxes, right? But you also want to be able to manage and grow your business or you're doing bookkeeping for somebody else. They wanna be able to see what's happening in their business along the way. That's one of the things I teach uh, my community all the time. I'm like, do it for yourself, not just for your tax professional. And so in the Getting Started Workshop, it's actually about starting with how do you read your reports and then designing the different features, right? Because QuickBooks has multiple you can create invoices, you can do sales receipts, you can directly deposit, so many different ways to use it. Um, but you gotta figure out what's the best one for you and that's what we cover and then you can decide, I'll ask you throughout the workshop, which one are you gonna use? Um, so it's a free workshop, but it also will help you get started with QuickBooks, really with what I call the end in mind. So I look forward to seeing you join me on the next workshop and if you have any questions about what we covered today, come join me over there, we'll do a live Q&A at the end. All right, see you soon, let me know you're here, bye.